Hey there, I'm talking about growing your business and in particular, should you hire an apprentice or a tradesperson? Now a trades business, as I've said many, many times, right, is a people business. You're gonna grow by hiring more people and by them doing the work of your business, right? That's really the only way you're gonna scale your business, hiring more people. And an obvious choice is, hmm, should I hire a tradesperson or an apprentice? Let's compare the two. A tradesperson is usually grown up, experienced, highly skilled, and expensive. And an apprentice is usually the opposite, inexperienced, unskilled, often young and juvenile and a bit immature, but, but quite cheap and even subsidised by government, right? So it's, it's, it's easy to see why they might be appealing because of that cheapness. Right, they're inexpensive, so it's low risk. It's low risk for you because if it doesn't work out, it doesn't really matter. Um, and it doesn't really matter so much for them either because they're young, they've not got commitments and, and, and obli financial obligations and shit, they still leave at home. So if it doesn't work out, it's not a problem for them and you don't feel so bad if you let someone go. Whereas if you've got a tradesperson and they've got a family and a mortgage and things like that, you know, letting them go is a bigger deal for you and for them. So if it doesn't work out, it's more problematic for everybody and, you, and it's a bigger risk. An apprentice can also feel like kind of cheap labour, you know, they can do the fetching and carrying and do the kind of the low level jobs that you might consider a labourer might do, only cheaper, and, and they're learning the trade on the way. And it can feel like a win-win, and you know, and in many ways it is, right? They can do the, the, the fetching and carrying while apprenticed to a proper tradesperson, and the tradesperson can be doing the higher skilled work that you have to pay them that extra money for, because they can do it. So there's a lot of appeal. However, they're useless too, aren't they? They need extra supervision. They need to spend time being trained. You can't leave them alone. You need to make sure you have a responsibility to them, right? To train them, to look after them, to keep them safe, to keep them busy, to tell them to get off their phones. You know, all that stuff, right? You have a responsibility to these youngsters. And, it, and it's not really the cheap labour that we kind of imagine when we're getting an offsider to help us. So I want you to remember that. Not only are they, do they require more supervision and support from you, that responsibility, but but they're not that great at doing the work either. If you've only got somebody who can do those low level jobs, it's a limitation, right? And I'm not trying to discourage you from having apprentices. I'm a fan. Like I said, it's a responsibility to the apprentices and to the industry in general that, that you guys have, right? Mm -hmm. Training people, you all got trained. It's an important thing. But if you're growing a business and you want to grow your business, you need to think carefully. You can't just keep hiring apprentices You'll have people who don't know anything. You'll be, you'll be unable to leave them on site while you go off and do quotes or whatever, right? So, you know, they come with restrictions and I think you need to balance it out. For lots of people, they hire an apprentice. It's kind of your first hire as your offsider to do your fetching and carrying. And I think perhaps your next hire should be a tradesperson, you know, and so on, right? And I would encourage you to think in terms of an operational unit. This is what I encourage my clients to do as they grow. Think of an operational unit. What's an operational unit for your business? Is it one tradesperson and one junior person out there together in a vehicle doing jobs together? Is it is it two tradesperson with a junior assistant, two tradespeople even, with a junior assistant doing the fetching and carrying? You know, what is it? What's suitable for your business? What's right? Is it a crew of five with three tradespeople and two apprentices? Or is it a crew of five with, you know, one tradesperson and four apprentices being at different stages? You call it. But understand those restrictions. They need supervising. They can't sign off on jobs. You know, they need, you need to protect them and look after them and don't understand stuff as well. So think it like that. They're not just cheap and handy. They come with responsibility and they're not very good at stuff necessarily because they haven't learned it yet. So they're a beautiful thing, apprentices, I think. <laughs> Cheeky little buggers with their Monday clubs and their phones and their, you know, irresponsibility and all that stuff. They're great. But, but use them with care. Don't just think they're a cheap way to get shit done. You'll, you'll be frustrated. And if you're going to grow your business, if you're going to get five and, and ten people, you're going to be restricted if you have to do too much supervision. So consider tradespeople and apprentices and don't just think of them as an easy, an easy quick win. Right. And that's, you know, I help people grow and scale their trade businesses, apprentices and thinking through decisions like this. It's a very small part of it, you know. If you want to find out more about the business coaching, book a 10-minute chat. We'll talk about whether it's right for you right now. 
um, maybe come to my next Tools Down workshop and uh, I'll explain over two days the framework that I use to help people grow and scale. Or you can uh, subscribe to these emails and get these videos delivered every Tuesday. See you later.